probability in statistics 1 february march 2022 we are starting with this let's look at the first question what is the first question all about so the first question looks like it's a question of probability distribution that's also known as drv so probability distribution and it's drv now let me label it a fair red spinner a fair red spinner has edges numbered one two two three so there are two twos over here a fair blue spinner has edges numbered negative three negative two negative one negative one and then it says each spinner is spun once number on the edge on which the spinner lands is noted the random variable x denotes the sum of the resulting two numbers a draw up the probability distribution table for x and given that the expectation is this much find the value of variance of x so straightforward question so let's first draw a sample space diagram this horizontal numbering is for the red and this uh, vertical line is for the blue plus sign to show that it's about addition so this is one and this is two and this is two and this is three and this is negative three and negative two and negative one and negative one so there are two uh, negative ones over here there were two twos over there so negative one and negative one and similarly there were twos and twos so now uh, the working is you have to add it up so therefore negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 and then a uh, negative 1 and then negative 1 and then 0 similarly with negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1 and then a 0 and then a 0 and then a 1 negative 1 plus 1 is 0 and this 1 1 and 2 and this is exactly the same repetition 0 1 1 and 2 so that is the working for this one and now i have to draw up a table what is the smallest uh, value that you see the smallest value is negative one so one two three that's three negative ones that you see what else is there the second smallest thing is zero there are five zeros what's the next thing that is one 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 and one five ones and last but not the least uh, there are two twos and even before that there is also a negative two which i missed out so these are the different numbers that you see so let me draw up a table so now this is a table horizontally that's a probability distribution table you have x and the corresponding values of the probability so the smallest value is negative two and then negative one and then zero and then a one and then a two so negative two appears once that's one out of 16 this is the probability negative one that appears three times the pink ones that is three out of 16 zero appears five times that is five out of 16 one appears five times that's also five over 16 2 appears uh, 2 times that's 2 out of 16 expectation is already calculated for us and variance of x we need to calculate so we need to calculate expectation of x square that is sigma p x square so let me make a column for x square that is 4 1 0 1 and 4 so therefore this is 4 multiplied with 1 1 multiplied with 3 0 multiplied with 5 1 multiplied with 5 and 4 multiplied with 2 everything added together divided by 16 because the 16 was the common denominator so this is 4 plus 3 is 7 and 7 plus 5 is 12 12 plus 8 is 20 this is 20 over 16 that is the working for this one expectation of x is 0.25 which is 1 fourth or 4 over 16 actually let me write this thing as 1 fourth because I need to square it expectation of x the whole thing square is 1 over 16 
therefore variance of x that is expectation of x square minus square of expectation of x that is 20 over 16 minus 1 over 16 so it's a smooth number that is 19 over 16 which can be written as 1 whole 3 over 16 leave the answer in fractions so the first question is done second question now it says in a certain country the probability of more than 10 centimeter of rain on any particular day is 0 0.18 that is the first thing that you observe so let me underline it probability more than 10 centimeter of rain on any particular day is 0 0.18 independently of the weather of any other day find the probability in any randomly chosen seven day period and this was for a day more than two days have more than 10 centimeter of rain so first of all the statement more than 10 centimeter of rain that is your probability of success that is your success so the probability of success is 0 0.18 that's the first thing they are talking about a seven day period so therefore x follows a binomial distribution 7 comma 0 0.18 that is the first thing that you should worry about now for three marks they are saying find the probability of more than two so probability x is greater than two that is probability x is greater than or equal to three which is one minus probability x is less than or equal to two which is 1 minus probability of x is equals to 0 plus probability of x is equals to 1 plus probability x is equals to 2. So therefore this is 1 minus this is 7c0 and then 7c1 and 7c2. So now this is 0 0.18, this is 0 0.18, this is 0 0.18, this is 0 0.82, 0 0.82, 0 0.82. Now this is uh, power 0, power 1, power 2 and this is 7 and 6 and 5. Write down all the calculations, show everything and this answer then comes out to be 0 0.115 correct to three significant figures that is the answer for this particular part for three marks now what is the new thing for three randomly chosen seven day period so this is a seven day period a week a week and a week so this is three randomly seven day period so this is week one and then a week two and then a week three these are three randomly chosen period so let me underline it find the probability exactly two of these periods so exactly two that you will calculate based upon this three have at least one day now this is something else at least one day with more than seven day of rain so now this is related to the seven day period so therefore for seven day period this is one particular seven day period so this is a seven day period which is actually a week so x follows a seven day period binomial distribution 7 comma 0 0.18 and they're asking for at least one day probability x is greater than or equal to one which is one minus probability x is equals to zero one minus seven c zero and this is 0.18 raised to power of zero 0.82 raised to power of seven which is one minus 0.82 raised to power of seven and after the subtraction this answer comes out to be 0.755 this is the answer that you get now this is basically step one and now we are moving towards step two so step two is you would say y 
follows another binomial distribution, there are three weeks. And probability of success is this thing, that is 0.751. So therefore, this 0.751 is your success. And it says exactly 2. Probability y is equals to 2. Therefore, this is 3c2. This is 0.751. And this is 1 minus 0.751. This is raised to power of 2. This is raised to power of 1. And then you evaluate this thing, of course, using a calculator. So the final answer is 0.421. That is the answer for this particular part. So a very classy question of binomial probability distribution. So in two parts, you have used the binomial thrice. So that is a classic question. Now, uh, let me add to it something like this. Okay, let's move on. Question number three. It says at a summer camp, test is taken by 250 children. The time taken to the nearest minute to complete the test were recorded. The results are summarized in the table. Now I have left space to make a table as such. So what I'll do is that uh, I'll make a table at the top and at the bottom. So if I make a line like this, let me make it more thinner, a line like this and another line at the bottom like this and what am i interested in i am interested in uh, this thing that is uh, the class boundaries that is the first thing so i'm interested in let me make a thin marker take a thin marker this is class boundaries for the time and minutes so this is 0 0.5 to 30.5 30.5 to 45.5 45.5 to 65.5, 65.5 to 75.5, and 75.5 to 100.5. So these are your class boundaries. And uh, do we have the class width? We can have the class width also. So where should I make that column? So I think over here makes more sense because I would then add one more column. So 30.5, this is linked to this. This is 30, and this is 15, and this is 20, and this is uh, 10, and the last one is 25. Let me add one more column in green. That is about frequency density. So frequency density which is frequency divided by class width. So therefore, this is uh, frequency divided by class width. So this goes like this, this divided by this, and this, and this, and this, and this. So now this is frequency divided by class width is the frequency density. This is frequency over class width. So when you divide, so 21 divided by 30, this is 0 0.7. Uh, 30 divided by 15 is 2.0. 68 divided by 20 is 3.4. 86 divided by 10, that's 8.6. And then last, 45 divided by 25. So that is 9 divided by 5, which is 1.80. These are the five different values that you get. So now let's talk about drawing the histogram. You should have the x-axis, this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. And what else is there? Are the scaling, so therefore this is frequency density, and this is the time in minutes. And uh, the numbering is from uh, 0 0.5 to 100.5 so therefore this is just like a 0.5 here so this is 0.5 and this is uh, five regions so this is 20.5 and let me label this thing as 20 first of all 
so I'll draw it like that this is 0 and this is 20 and this is 40 and this is 60 and this is 80 and this is 100 but the lines that you will be drawing that will be like this this is 0 0.5 and this thing is 20.5 or maybe even less because 20 to 40 that's two marks each no 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 it would be actually a bit less also so that's two units each so it's just a little bit on the outside somewhere here and somewhere here and somewhere here so the red dots are for the 0.5 and then 80.5 and then 100.5 and the first bar yeah let me draw the last bar that is from 75.5 to 100.5 so that is 75.5 so therefore this is 70 and somewhere here is 75.5 till 100.5 and it has a height of 1.80 so now let me label the height it's going all the way till 8.6 so this is 2.0 this is 4.0 this is 6.0 this is 8.0 this is 10.0 and the last one is from 75.5 to 100.5 with a width of 1.8. So what's the scale on the vertical axis? On the vertical axis, uh, 10 small squares is one frequency density. On the horizontal axis, we have 10 small squares equals to 20 units. So now when I have to label 1.8, this is actually 1 and 1.8 is like this. So therefore, uh, let me label the values. So therefore, this is 70 and this is 1.8, a little bit over here. And this is 100 and a little bit over here. So now you draw this region that is something like this. The lines are thicker. Let me make it thinner. Something like this and something like this you just draw this line and that is like over the edge so this is one bar for the last region and then you can draw another bars just like that so i've done the calculation i've illustrated it i've labeled the axes correctly and it's all about it now which interval contains the median this is one question that has been asked recently a lot of times there are 250 children so 250 divided by 2 is 125 that means the interval containing the 125th or the 126th value that contains the median so now you have to read over here this is 21 frequency plus 30 that is 51 51 plus 68 that exceeds 125 I think so so therefore 51 plus 68 that adds up to 119 no you have to go further therefore this particular one therefore 66 to 75 that is the one 66 to 75 it's only for one mark so just state this this is the interval that contains the median now it says given that an estimate of the mean time they're not asking us to calculate they are saying an estimate of the mean is this much what feature of the distribution accounts for the median and mean being different so now it's a very nice question they have asked the solution is which kind of distribution have the same mean and median so remember mean equals to median in any distribution which is symmetrical such as normal distribution such as something else that means for it to be equal the mean and median for symmetrical distribution mean and median should be equal that means if mean does not equal to median therefore it's a non symmetrical distribution that is the logic that we have to apply in a very very clear and concise manner so this one question was about frequency distribution and it was about histogram and a little bit of something more. So question number three is done. Now let's talk about question number four. Question number four says the weights of male leopards in a particular region are normally distributed with mean 55 and standard deviation 6. So male leopards 
follows a normal distribution. This is 55 comma 6 square. Find the probability that the randomly chosen male leopard from this region weighs between 46 and 62. So probability male leopard weighs between 46 and 62. And then you go to the table. So you have to first standardize it and then go to the table. Probability Z lies between 62 minus 55 divided by 6. And this is 46 minus 55 divided by 6. Probability Z lies between uh, after reduction 1.167 and this becomes negative 1.5. And the rule is rule number 7. Now when I say rule number 7, that is what I've taught in my class. And we have developed our concept for sketches. But once the concepts are developed, we don't need sketches anymore. So therefore this is phi of 1.5 plus phi of 1.167 and then minus 1. Read the table for the first one. So let me go to the uh, syllabus. That's the uh, normal distribution table. So 1.5 is this much. So 1.5 is just right around the corner. <clears throat> and 1.167. 1 1.1 1 1 and then 6. So that is this one. And then 7 is this much. So 8, 7, 7, 0 plus 14, 8, 7, 8, 4. So 8, 7, 8, 4. So therefore, let me write it. This is 0.8784 and I think that one was 0.9332 minus 1 and the final answer is 0.8116 but rounded off that's 0.812 correct to 3 significant figures. So that's the answer for this part. So this is a question of normal distribution. So this is normal distribution. Now let's move to the second part. The second part is the weights of female leopards in this region are normally dis distributed. So F follows a normal distribution 42 and standard deviation is sigma. So variant goes in the bracket. 25% of the female leopards in the region have weight less than 36. Probability F lesser than 36 is 25%. In other words, probability F greater than 36 or is equal to 0.75. Now, this is a very famous value of 0.75. Let me go to the table. I remember it. That is 0.674. It's in the strip down here. That is 0.75 and this is 0.674. So, therefore, probability Z is greater than 36 minus 42 divided by sigma is 0.75. Probability Z is greater than some value is 0.75. Since it's a greater sign, therefore the Z value is negative 0.674. And then you do comparing coefficient 36 minus 42 over sigma is negative 0.674. The negative negative would cancel out. You would divide. And sigma comes out to be 8.90, correct to three significant figures. So that was another straightforward question. This one, the first one was forward solving. Let me label it. So this is <clears throat> forward solving. That means using the Z value to find the probability. And this one is backward solving. So this is back solving. So both parts are done. Let's look at the third part. The distribution of male and female leopards are independent of one another. That's the keyword independent. A male leopard and a female le leopard are each chosen at random. Male follows a normal distribution. I'll write the data. Female follows a normal distribution. I'll write the data. For female, it's 42 and 8.90 square. So it's 42 and 8.90 square. And for male, this is 55 and 6 square. 
Now it says both of these are less than 46. Find each answer individually. Probability M is less than 46. Uh, wasn't that given? Uh, yeah, between 46. Actually, it's between 46, so just the standardized value is given. So if, uh, because uh, we have done this so, so it just struck to me. Z is less than 46 minus 55 divided by 6. So that is probability Z is less than negative 1.5. That's the same thing as probability Z greater than positive 1.5, which is 1 minus 5 of 1.5. And this value is 1 minus 0.9332. This comes out to be 0 0.0668. That is the answer for this part. For female leopards, probability F is lesser than 46, probability Z is lesser than 46 minus 42 divided by 8.90. And then you standardize it, probability Z is lesser than, there is 4 at the top, 8.90 at the bottom. So this is 0.449, this is positive. This is direct reading, 5 of 0.449. And this comes out to be 0.6732. So this comes out to be 0.6732. So this is the other answer. So this is for the male leopard. And this one is for the female leopard. And now I have highlighted the word independent. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion is probability of A and B should equal probability of A into probability of B. This is for independent events. This is independent of this. So this thing is happening. Male is lesser than 46 and probability female is less than 46. So therefore 0 0.0668, 0 0.0668 multiplied with 0 0.6732. You would multiply these two numbers. So this is the blue one. This is the orange one. You would multiply these two and this answer comes out to be 0 0.0450. That is the answer for this particular part. So it was a good part. So this is the concept of basic probability that's being asked over here. Now question number five. What is this question all about? So question number five is about, it looks like permutation and combination. And uh, first it's combination then it's permutation so first of all this is ncr and npr <clears throat> the question says a group of 12 people contains three boys four girls and five adults so let me just highlight it three boys and four girls so let me just reduce the size this is three boys four girls and five adults. Now the question says, in how many ways can a team of five people be chosen from the group if exactly one adult is included? So basically, there are five adults and three plus four equals to seven boys and girls, that is teenagers. So this is boys and girls combined together. If one adult is included, that means you have to include the rest of the four from here. So therefore, this thing would be 5C1 multiplied with 7C4. That is the answer for this particular part. So this is a concept of simple combination that you apply. Now, the second part is more trickier. And that's why that is for four marks. That is in how many ways can a team of five people be chosen from the group if the team includes at least two boys. So this is at least two boys and at least one girl. Now what we do is that let me make a column and uh, let me first write over here boys. This is actually for girls. So this one is for boys and this one is for girls and this one is for the rest the adults so this is boys this is girls this is adults and this is the working so first of all two boys one girl that is the first combo two one 
what do we have to choose from the adult? I'll write it at the end. How many boys are there? Boys are three and girls are four. Boys are three and girls are four. Now, 2, 1 is one option. If I change the boys to uh, fix the boys to 2 and increase the girl, can we have 2, 2? Yes. Can we have 2, 3? Yes. Can we have 2, 4? No, because 5 is already done. So when you choose 2, 1, you choose 2 from the adults. When you choose 2, 2, you choose 1. When you choose 2, 3, you choose 0. So that's very, very logical. Now, what if we fix the girls to 1? And if we fix the girl to 1, then boys could be 3. So 3, 1. And fix the girl to 1. And the boys would be 4 but this is not possible so backtrack what about make this 2 and make this 3 that is also a possibility so 3 plus 1 is 4 you are left with 1 3 plus 2 is 5 you are left with 0 now this is all set the first one let's read it out 2 1 and then a 2 this is 2 2 then a 1 this is 2 3 then a 0 this is 3, 1, then a 1. This is 3, 2, and then a 0. So 5 possibilities are there. And how many adults were there? Adults were 5. So this is 5 adults over here. So now write down all the answers. That is 3, C, 2, into 4, C, 1, into 5, C, 2. That is the first one. This is 3, C, 2, into 4, C, 2, into 5, C, 1. 3C2 into 4C3 into 5C0. 3C3 into 4C1 into 5C1. This is 3C3 into 4C2 into 5C0. You can write down all the answers. You can double check and that answer will be the total that is required. So now this is how this question is done. So combination in the first part, combination in the second part. Now let's have a look. The same group of 12 people stand in a line. And this time it's talking about arrangements are there. If the three boys stand together. So the three boys, they will stand together. Adult is at the end of the line. Each end of the line. This is for the adult. What about the girls? No criteria as such. So now there is an adult at the front. There is an adult at the end. So let me, this is an adult at the front. This is an adult at the end. So this is adult. Let me change the color. That's an adult. That's an adult. So how many adults are there? This is 5P1. 5P1 and 5C1 is exactly the same thing. Now one adult is used up. So this is 4P1. That's the next thing. What else is there? The three boys stand together. So put the three boys in a box. So this is a box of three boys. This is a boy. This is a boy. This is a boy. How many girls are there? So you have three girls, I think, or four girls. Let me double check. Girls are four. Girls are four. Three adults are left. So therefore, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, boxes 8, that is 8 factorial. That is for these ones. What is happening inside the box that is 3 factorial for the blue box? So for the blue box, this is 3 factorial for the boys. What is happening at the end and and? At the end, what is happening? You have five possibilities for adults at the one end and adults at the other end. They are the same category, so there is no swapping. So this is 5P1 and this is 5P1. So you multiply all of them together. And that's a big answer that you get. And that answer, of course, you can calculate. So that's how this working is done. So 8 factorial is for this thing. 3 factorial is for the boys, this is the adults and this is the adults. 
that's how this question is done so it's a nice question now question number six let's have a look so now there are six questions so seven i'm just curious so now it's good six questions where they are long ones so now the sixth question is a factory produces chocolates and uh, there are three flavors and that is orange and lemon and strawberry in the ratio three is to five is to seven so lemon orange and strawberry so let me choose the right colors so lemon is like orange is like orange and lemon would be make it green so therefore this is lemon and then it's orange so let me make this orange and then there is a strawberry so strawberry is reddish so i don't have that red color so let me ignore it so therefore this is a orange and this is the reddish one that is the strawberry so lemon and orange and strawberry so therefore it's in a ratio 3 is to 5 is to 7 and it says uh, one at a time and the production line first chocolate will be lemon flavor that Nell chooses in the second in the seventh chocolate that she checks so probability of lemon that is 3 out of 15 and the probability of everything else is there probability of not L L complement that is 12 out of 50 now when we do this working what happens is that first you have to decide what is the working all about is it about geometric distribution is it about a binomial distribution that you have to think the first chocolate this is the key word the first chocolate therefore x follows a geometric distribution probability of success is 3 over 15 of course you can reduce it because the probability is fixed seventh chocolate so therefore the first six are failures and the last one is success so last one is 3 over 15 the first six are 12 over 15 raised to power of 6 if you want to use the formula i can also teach you that probability x is equals to r that is q raised to power of r p p raised to power of 1 so this is your q in this scenario and this is your p in this scenario so that is the working for the first question first uh, question number six the first part find the probability that the first chocolate with lemon flavor that Nell chooses is after she has checked at least six chocolates now there are two very very important results that you should use and that is these two probability x is less than or equal to n or r whatever you want to write it is 1 minus q raised to power of n probability x is greater than n is q raised to power of n so these are the two things that comes in x follows a geometric distribution so x follows a geometric distribution with probability of success p and p plus q adds up to 1 we all know this so now you don't have to think it says after she has checked at least seven chocolates at least six chocolates so therefore the rule is very simple its application of the second rule probability x is greater than 6 that is q raised to power of 6 what is q 12 over 15 not getting a lemon raised to power of 6 and that is the answer basically what it means is that you are getting your first success after six trials that is what it means that means on the seventh one you will be having success so there were first six failures but don't think that much just apply this formula and you're all set because there is already too much to think in the parts that are coming now let's move on it says what is a surprise box now it says a surprise box consists of a box of chocolates each containing 15 chocolates again three are lemon and five are orange and seven are strawberry 
seven a strawberry. Is it the same number as before? Three five seven. Uh, yeah, it's the same number as before. Petra has a box of surprise chocolates. She chooses three chocolates at random from the box. So three chocolates at random from the box. She eats each chocolate before choosing the next one. That means this is a concept of without replacement. So neither binomial is possible nor geometric is possible because it's edibles and she is eating one before the next. Find the probability that none of Petra's three chocolates has orange flavor. Now the focus is on orange. So orange flavor, the probability of orange is how much? 5 over 50. So probability of orange complement, not orange, is 10 over 50. That includes these two. The lemon and the strawberry joined together, that's not orange. Got the idea? So now uh, there are two ways of doing about this particular question. I'll teach you both because it's uh, good that you know both of them. So if we talk about the probability method, so method one, that is probability. So when we apply the probability concept, the denominator is 15, 14 and 13. So 15 into 14 into 13, I'll multiply and I'll write it down. Let me first do that. That is 15 into 14 into 13. That comes out to be 2730. The numerator is not orange. So not orange is 10 and 5 and uh, 10 and 9 and 8. That is the answer for this particular part. Think about it all over again. So first of all, this is uh, not orange. So therefore, this is 10 and 9 and 8. And then the denominator is such and such. So the numerator is 720. So if I divide and let me uh, grab my calculator. So when I do the division, what do I get? So this is uh, 0.264. That's one way. Or you can leave the answer as it is 72 over 273. I'll leave the answer in fractions. If someone persists on decimals, that's 0.264. Method two. That is the concept of NCR. The denominator is 15C3. The numerator is selecting nothing out of orange, 5C0, and then selecting 3 out of 10. So this is 10C3 divided by 15C3. Use a calculator. You should get the exact same answer. So there are two different ways of doing this particular question. Let's move on. Find the probability that each of Petra's three chocolates has a different flavor. Again, there is method one of using probability. And then there is method two of using a combination. When we use probability, it is basically with a touch of NPR. When we use probability, it is with a touch of NPR. Why? Because you have to take care of the order. Now someone can ask me why I did not take care of the order. Because this is like O complement, O complement, O complement. So there is only one way of arranging it. So therefore this is basically multiplication by one. When you take care of NCR, you don't have to worry about the order. So no worries for order. I think the second me method is easier. So again, probability plus NPR, when you do this, you still have the same thing, has a different flavor. What are the three different flavors? Let me write it. So that is orange, uh, three lemon, five orange, and seven strawberry. Three lemon and five orange and seven strawberry. So this is three 
and this is five and this is seven so lemon orange strawberry they all have a different flavor so this is 15 this is 14 this is 13 and then for example one of them is lemon and the other one is orange and the other one is strawberry so therefore this is three and this is five and this is seven and don't forget to multiply by six how does this six comes this is basically a three colors all different it can be arranged in six ways basically ABC ACB BAC BCA CAB CBA so this is 3 factorial which is the same thing as 6 so that is the working for this particular part so these are the colors I have put it on the side now that is one thing and uh, the working uh, would be simple and then when you multiply and divide and everything so therefore let me just show you this is 3 and uh, 5 ones are 5 sorry this is 3 into 5 is 15 15 15 cancels and uh, this one is 2 3s are 2 7s are so 7 and 7 cancels so you are left with a nice number which is 3 over 13 exact and someone can convert it into decimals if they want so let me push it to the side and now method number two so now let me first draw a vertical line over here so this is like this now method number two and over here also something like this so now in method number two what is happening in method number two this is the denominator is 15 c3 and you have 3 c1 you're choosing three chocolates correct this is 5 c1 this is 7 c1 so one for each this is for the green and this is for the orange and this is for the strawberry that's how this thing is done and of course you get the same answer now let's look at the part e for four marks find the probability at least two of petra's three chocolates have strawberry flavor given that none of them has orange flavor now this wording at the very last none of them has orange flavor isn't it the same thing as none of petra's three chocolates have orange flavor yes so answer of part c which is 720 over 2730 that is what is needed over here so this is first of all answer of part c that is this thing and this answer is 720 over 2730 720 over 2730 i'm writing it in the raw form that is the first part that was 10 9 8 and 15 14 13 perfect now at least two of Petra's three chocolates have strawberry, but none of them has orange. So exactly two strawberry and exactly three strawberry. So this is two strawberry and three strawberry. Exactly three strawberry is very simple. That is 15 and this is 14 and this is 13 and three strawberries goes at the top one and two and three so that is how much that is seven into six into five that's seven into six into five so six into five is 30 30 into seven is 210 so this is 210 over 27 30 and let me double check once more that is uh, 15 into 14 into 13 that's 27 30 now why am i keeping a draw you will find the result at the very end exactly two strawberry so exactly two strawberry means first of all this is 15 this is 14 and this is 13 exactly two are strawberry this is strawberry this is strawberry that is seven 
and that is 6 but the last one doesn't have to be orange that means which flavor will it be it has to be lemon so lemon is how much that is 3 so this is 3 got the idea but one more thing is left that is multiplication by what so now you have to arrange it by 3 how does this 3 came along when you have three alphabets like a a b that can be arranged in three factorial over two factorial ways which is three because it's a a b a b a and b a a so when you have something like strawberry strawberry lemon that's strawberry lemon strawberry and lemon strawberry strawberry so that's how this three came along got the idea so when you multiply 3 into 3 is 9 and 9 into 42 let me double check so that's 9 multiplied by 42 that comes out to be 378 so the answer for this part comes out to be 378 over 2730 plus this thing because it's either this or this this is still the numerator so 378 plus 210 378 plus 210 that adds up to 588 so this answer comes out to be 588 over 2730 this is exactly 2 or exactly 3 that is at least 3 strawberry flavor so that is what you got for right now now it's about conditional probability so now it's conditional probability and the working is what you have to get it right and you have to make sure what goes at the bottom so answer of part c that the 720 over 2730 goes at the bottom this answer 588 over 2730 goes at the top and let me erase it a bit let me erase it a bit so therefore this answer boils down to 588 over 720 that's why i did not reduce it I can reduce it a bit 588 divided by 2 is 294 let me start with this and this is 360 and 294 divided by 2 is 147 so that's 147 over 180 I'll be very very happy with this answer now if someone persists on decimals they can divide and this answer comes out to be 0.817 correct to three significant figures so that was the whole paper it was a very wholesome experience uh, doing this paper and uh, uh, people listening out there make sure all your concepts are crystal clear you will come across one or two questions that will be too tough no one is denying that and keep that for last so now in this one if i say the last question was kind of tough not the whole thing but just a bit so keep that for last and uh, good luck for your exams uh, listen to every lecture that was being taught over here i tried my level best to teach you to the best of my abilities and uh, leaving the rest to allah for giving you success uh, in this exam take care allah hafiz